How exactly would you describe deep reading and what are the key processes involved in that? I'm going to say that reading, deep reading is like our, the brain is like, it's this wheel. It's got all these different parts that are coming back and forth, feed forward, feed backward. And it, it has to pull all this together at the end. So let's call this middle with all the spokes. It's going to be the sum of all these different processes, some of which are talking to each other, some of which are not. Yeah. But we need to think first about the background knowledge that we bring to bear. So mm -hmm. if we don't know what the words, let's just say circuit is, it doesn't matter the rest. So, mm -hmm. but your background knowledge about what that circuit is then gives you the basis for analogy. Human beings are analogical creatures. And so the background knowledge is being um, compared to the new knowledge of text. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the first parts of, uh, if you will, of, of the, the hub, one of the first spokes. But that also is connected to inference. Oh, gosh. So I'm inferring that this is very similar to what I know, but it's more and I have to add. So I'm I'm accommodating to this knowledge and I'm assimilating to be a Piagetian here. So I'm doing both. But mm -hmm. that inference then becomes a, a piece of what, oh, then I can deduce or induce the next piece of knowledge. So these analogy, inference, deduction, induction skills, all of them, if you will, are playing a part with background knowledge. Now, mm -hmm. all this is taking time. These are milliseconds, milliseconds, milliseconds. And they are feed forward, feed back information. And if you if you want to think about your frontal lobes as, as being partners in a dance, that background knowledge and, and all that inferential information is causing you to generate hypotheses. And you're going back and forth with the with your analytic skills to say that sounds right that sounds true that's mm -hmm. i can validate that i feel i can validate the truth of that or that is easily refutable or mm -hmm. i don't trust it so you're going back and forth with this cr these critical analytic skills so if you will in that in that all of that these spokes on this side, let's call them the science spokes or more mm -hmm. the Sherlock Holmes spokes. But then there are other spokes that are really beautiful in that they are the perception of beauty, if you mm -hmm. will. And they are, they are listening to almost the poetry and they are seeing the imagery and they are collecting um information that is that is often sensorial mm -hmm. or it can even be motoric if if you th think about um uh, i use the example uh of anna karenina when she leaps into the train track with her red bag on the platform and she's leaping we motorically activate Mm -hmm. The beauty of that imagery, that is really giving us extra, if you will, deep reading processes. Mm -hmm. But there's something else that fiction does in particular, though it can be anything, but fiction, I think, has a special place in it. And that is it lets us leave ourselves to take on the perspective of others mm -hmm. cognitively and affectively we begin to understand the thoughts like machiavelli and we begin to understand the feelings like tolstoy we are really two two or three forms of empathy one is more cognitive one is more active and we see this in the brain we are activating those beautiful perspective taking processes now when you put the perspective taking and the empathy and the the beauty and the critical analysis if you pull all that together 
you you have what is i would say the 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 penultimate not ultimate the penultimate heart of reading not the heart but the next step mm -hmm. it is combining all that so all the hubs come right there and then remember these are all milliseconds mm -hmm. then if you give your own best contemplative function you reach the ultimate heart which is why the first book i ever wrote was called proust and the squid the story and science of the reading brain because proust said at the heart of reading we leave the wisdom of the author behind to discover our own that's the ultimate mm -hmm. the penultimate are all those deep reading processes the contemplative sanctuary in which we can reflect have insights and sometimes go beyond the author sometimes go beyond any thought we've ever had that's that is the deepest yeah. aspect of reading